Okay, let's go back to the day. Let's go back to last Friday. Okay. You, uh, the chit-chat on the scanner was uh, there was someone with a gun at the Harvest Golf Course. That's what I heard. Obviously, that was you. Yep. I'm really? the only one. Ever. Not ever, but... Yeah. Everybody I, wants to know, what were you doing there? I go there every day. The superintendent and I talked about this, like we do every year, and I go up there, I scare the geese off the golf course. That's what I do. That's part of my job. In the fall, not this fall, but in the fall and the winter and the spring, when the staff comes back, I put it away. If there is anybody on that property, that does not come out. I drive a car and I'll scare them and throw things at them and do whatever it takes. But that's when I'm there by myself. You know, if there's people pruning, anybody, no. And that's just, that's my own standard that, no, that doesn't happen. Okay. I mean, it's, it's not like it's, you shoot a shotgun is going to travel like a high-powered rifle for a mile and a half. You know, they're good for... Okay, so that's your daily routine then? My daily routine. Like I said, I take the shotgun out of my safe, grab the shells, go to the truck, trigger lock before I leave the house. Mm -hmm. Go to the golf course, I just drive up around the top, and I can see the whole golf course. Mm -hmm. And I can see where they are. Then I come back down, usually park behind the pro shop by the 50s, take the shotgun out, trigger lock off, put the shells in my pocket, and I go for a walk. Usually just my walking, they see me and they fly away. You know, because the odd friend of theirs got shot. A lot of times they fly up in a big circle and they land right back where they were. So you do that for a couple hours. You shoot one and they're gone for, usually for good. Yeah. Um, and someone obviously saw you or heard you and... Oh, of course, our mechanic was working. I told him what I was doing. I was going to go out and do this and something. Okay. It's a daily. And someone calls the cops. <clears throat> Somebody called the cops. Someone from the golf wasn't course. I wasn't aware of this. Yeah. Someone from the golf course calls the cops. I, I don't know. Yeah. Your wife was there at the golf course at the time. She had, no, she had gone. I think she, she had gone to get paint and a few things we needed. Eh? Um, so, when I went on the course, she was gone, already gone. She's doing her job. She was gone. Right, and not, not to pry, everything is kosher between you and your wife. We had supper together last night. I go to her house, she comes to mine. Tonight, we're going out. Right. In the morning, I'm going to the golf course because I don't need to be there at 8 o'clock. Right. You know, I'm, I'm technically not employed. This is... You know, they, they helped me out when I got hurt. Yeah, I, I feel like I owe them something. Okay, yeah. and you were yeah. welcome at the Oh, of course I'm welcome. I have keys for everything. It's, you know. Okay. Care to speculate on who might have called the cops and why? No, there's, there's, I don't know if there's people in the clubhouse. Uh, there's a vehicle at the pro shop. I don't know, one of our secretaries was there, a mechanic was there. There could have been orchard people in their office. Uh, I, didn't, I don't well, go through all the doors. It's, you know, I'm there and did my thing and yeah, there's only a couple thousand geese up on the second fairway. And like I said, it's, I didn't even try to get them. They're too far away. One shot, they're gone. Then he landed on five, shot at the fifth fairway. Yeah, but I... So you pop up a couple of shots. And there's the sound. And then they were flying in the circle thing they did, and, and I tried to get one. Okay. As he flew over top of my head. And, yeah. was, and you've accomplished your goal, your job is done, you get in your vehicle. Finished. I got no reason to be there. And no one's told you, buddy, get out of here or no, anything like I've that? No, I've never been. Or, buddy, I'm calling the cops. You didn't... I have keys to everything in that golf course. So you didn't know that someone had, at the golf had no course idea. had called the police when you left? Nope. Okay. And you're driving down KLO? Yep. And uh, a police stopped officer... Stopped at Gordon. The light turned red, Stop. And I seen police cars, and they're all headed toward the lake. You know, the cop coming up, KLO turned around and go, and I'm watching all these cop cars going. I figured something was happening. Yeah. I'm seeing it, the light stopped, and they're going by me, and 
Then when I got to almost Pandozi, then and I, I heard the siren behind me. I took a look. I thought he w he wanted to get by me. That's why I pulled over. Okay. All right. And you, I didn't know it was for me. And you see this officer, this plainclothes officer with his gun drawn, pointed at you. Yep. And asked him what I did, and he never answered me. He said, "Keep your hands on top of that steering wheel. If they move, I will shoot you." Okay. Mistaken identity. Like you guys, I, this is the same as every day for weeks. Nothing is different except I'm down. And you, at one point, I, I take a photo of you with your hands up. Yeah. Okay. What's happening there? I'm doing what this guy pointed the gun. He's threatened to shoot me. He's telling me whatever he tells me, I do. Okay. I've you... never had a gun pointed at me. That is that is beyond unnerving. Okay. And you had the shotgun in the back seat. It's underneath my back seat. Yeah. It's underneath your back seat. Yeah. So you wouldn't seat. be able to see it then. No. Okay. And a trigger lock's on it. All right. And then he opens your door, or you open the door. Not that it matters. Yeah, the door is open. I may have opened it. The door is there's open. A, there's a cop on the other side, obviously, and looking around. Right. I was told to get out and get on the ground. Okay. Which the video shows you getting on your knees, and as you're about to put your hands on the pavement, that's when you're struck in the face. What was he saying to you um, as you were getting on your knees? I don't know. Part of this, this issue with my brain is, is the short-term memory issue gone. Okay, like, yeah, the next thing I remember, I was being put in the back of a police car. I didn't see the foot coming. I didn't see anything. I was just on my hands and knees. And the next moment, I'm being put in the back of a police car. Okay. The rest... I have no idea. When did you come to realize that uh, things had gone terribly wrong? When we got to the police station. And they were asking me about the golf course, and I was telling them, yeah, I go there every day. This is what I do, I work there. I scared the geese and explained everything. And it's not a bit, this is a daily routine, it has been for years. And, has never been an issue. Ever. Nothing. RCMP so, are saying you're charged with careless use of a firearm, yep. quote, in connection with a violent domestic situation. Yeah, and I've heard that many times. And I've asked what domestic dispute. My ex-wife, who walked out of the courthouse with me, we were holding hands, has asked what domestic dispute. We get along very well. I said, we had supper last night. And we're going to see her again tonight. We phone each other. The, I may get three, four calls a day from her. Had you had any encounters with the police dealing with domestic violence prior to this? Had there been any complaints filed against you by your wife or ex-girlfriend or what have you? Nope. Where do you I, I don't know where any of this came from. She has no idea. She keeps saying there was none. We get along fine. I've never been talked to by the police about anything. You know, we've had our dif differences, arguments, and our s screaming things, but we still go camping and ski trips and holidays, and so I have no idea. And you have no previous criminal record? No, I got nothing. It's got to be running through your mind. Where is this? Where is this? This allegation coming from? Exactly. You know, it's, oh, it's so. <clears throat> here's the, the killer: domestic violence, which I don't know anything about. Trudy knows nothing about. Nobody knows anything about this. Okay, now shouldn't there be a charge? Of all the people. I cannot talk to his, I cannot set foot on the harvest, I cannot talk.
If any employer, anybody from the Harvest Golf Club phones me, I cannot talk to them. I tell them I cannot talk to them and hang up. But Trudy's okay. Now we can see each other, have coffee every morning, and we can phone each other all we want. She's an employee there, and domestic violence, well, shouldn't she be the first one I can't talk to? I would think so. I'm not big on the law, not like I know a whole lot about it. But it just sort of makes sense to me. If this was the issue, do you think and that she the, works at the golf course? Do you think that the answer will come out? Well, I hope so. Because everything, everything, my life has been turned upside down, back to square one. And I'm, I, I, technically I've lost about six months here. And I'd like to know why. I would really like to know what the hell I did to deserve this. I've worked way too long and hard to get back. So my life, I have a nice life. And it was back. And that's why I was going into work and just getting used to going back to work. And as the doctors tell me, he's slowly get back into going, not full time, because, okay, well, the golf course treated me like gold. When I was hurt and in the hospital, they couldn't have done more for me. Yeah, Super Tennis got, I am the only person there that has the paperwork, the pal, the gut to do the geese. Yeah, I'm giving something back. Thank you very much. And I know we have to get these geese out of here. So right. I'm doing what I consider my job. No, not in the payroll. Everybody sees me every day. I go in, I talk to the secretary. Say, like I said, I don't go to the clubhouse pro shop. I have no reason to. Uh, and you haven't asked the, you haven't talked to the clubhouse and said who called the cops on me and no. anything like that? If I set foot on that golf course, I am looking at jail. I spent four days. No. Mm. Jail is a very, very bad thing. Mm. That, no, I'm not going back. And I will not do anything that could risk that. So that, that, if talking to my boss can risk that, I hang up on him. You've seen the video? I've seen the video. I've seen it. The first time I've seen it was Monday night when we got home. I had no idea. I just knew it. How'd you feel when you saw it? I didn't know what had happened. That was my answer was questioned. The question was answered. Now it's why. And nobody can tell me why. I can't. I'm usually good at figuring things out. Why? Why would you do that to anybody? I wasn't trying to run away. I mean, I had no idea what I stopped in the first place. And I was doing what I was told. I wasn't being smart mouthed. I, uh, What is your um, opinion of the RCMP today? And what was it before? Four days I was in the city cells. There was not a problem with any of them at all. They were very accommodating. And this, uh, Wilson, I mean, he was, with, he was pretty much my babysitter when I was going to the hospital a couple times. They all treated me fine. I mean, there's that bad apple, throw the whole box out? No. There's good and bad in everything. Some people are very good on their jobs. The guy standing beside him might be a complete loser. It's good and bad in everything. Unfortunately, that type of job takes a little more brains that a lot of people have common sense, understanding it, just, you know. Are you in a forgiving I mood? <clears throat> I don't stay mad. I don't. I, get, I mean, I have a lot of animosity toward this guy. I do. And I get mad. Things happen. I, 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 I don't have the time, and I will not put the effort into being you know, mad and a little counterproductive, you know? No. I seen Dr. Miller at the hospital today, the guy that was 
from day one working on my recovery. And we had a long talk about this. I'm like, it's, 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 it's bad for me. You know? I Did you talk about this is bad for you? No. To harbor the resentment, the animosity, and I'm really having a hard time not hating this guy. And it's on my mind all the time. And I just, I, I just got to get, do something, get it out of my mind because it's, it's not helping me at all. Do you think that one day you'll be able to forgive him? I don't think he knew what the hell he was doing. You know, forgive. He set me back half a year. If I'm lucky, I may never get back to where I was. So you forgive somebody for that? Guy said, you cut your hand off? Oh, that's okay. No. It's one thing when you do something and you get what's coming to you. That I understand, you know, but you, you read of innocent victims all the time. It's not fair, there's no justice. So, oh, well, that's okay. It wasn't me. No, I, I don't harbor bad feelings. It's, it's just, it's not me. Forgive him, I've not thought about that. It's never crossed my mind. How do you feel about how the community has reacted to oh, your story? It's, it, it's shocking. I mean, the, the total strangers. I walk across, I walk across the parking lot. Cars are pulling up, rolling the windows down, and wish me the best of luck. And I mean, there's a lot of negative comments. I mean, there's really so. People are upset. You know, they see this and. A lot of people know me, <laughs> and they're, they're asking the same thing. I've known you all my life, what the hell did you do? I, was, I don't know. Yeah, do you think this entire incident has labeled you? Or? It has, this uh, domestic violence. And they got me painted as some kind of wife beater something. I know a lot of people, and all the people I know, they all know Trudy. And they're just shaking their heads saying, well, this, and they're asking me, where did this come from? I, I don't know. They ask her, she says, don't know. Okay, well, we wish you a speedy recovery. It looks like you, you, uh, your, your eye is improving slowly. And, uh, I said a couple of weeks. Nah, the guy spent a long time in my eye, and it's going to be fine. It's just the blood. Broken vessel. Oh, I'll get better. And one day you'll be back at the yeah. harvest golf. Cosmetic, well, that'll get better. Yeah, well, we'll see. I got a court date. You know, I, I they don't have a leg to stand on. Like I said, I'm walking around this course like I do every day, do the same thing. There is nobody on the golf course. I was the only one out there. And I gave my statement how far away it was from the clubhouse first. Okay, buddy. I've, I've had guns since I was a little kid. We used to go in the bush shoot 22s and like, yeah. Now I'm a freak about safety, which, like when the police said, you know, I, I agreed to let him go take my guns because I wasn't going to get out of jail as long as I had him. Okay, I know I'll get him back. Unless you got a truckload of plastic explosives, you would never get into my safe. I gave him the combination. I gave him the authority to go in my house, everything, to accommodate him. So, but I don't, what I have is safety for all of this stuff is tenfold what I need. But I'd rather be safe. If the constable was standing in front of you right now, what would you say now?
uh, I'd be speaking Portuguese because the English would definitely get me shot. And I've already been there with this guy once. That you have. So. All right, buddy Tavares, thanks for doing this.